Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the report of a leaked letter sent by the International Trade Secretary, Liz Truss, to Boris Johnson and other cabinet colleagues expressing her concerns about the fact that we are unprepared for Brexit at the end of the year. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So we have a little bit of an issue regarding Brexit. The government are not at all interested in a free trade agreement with the EU and so checks at borders will need to take place. However, Boris Johnson spent so much time trying to con people that there would be no such checks that he delayed the implementation of the systems needed to accommodate those checks. Because what he's done is to foster an attitude among supporters that could be characterised by a comment I received on a video yesterday in relation to, well, the border issue. And uh, it ran along the lines of, it's only the EU that wants to do checks. We don't want to do checks. Now, before I briefly explain why this is incorrect, I can't let it pass without commenting on the cognitive dissonance yet again related to Brexit. Because Brexit supporters keep banging on about controlling our borders. We control our borders. They're like a leaky sieve when we're in the EU. And yet they are now suggesting, actually, it's only the EU want to control their borders because they're nasty EU types. We want our borders completely open. We don't want to put checks in place. Why would we want to do that? And yet at the same time, they still bang on about controlling the borders when you throw immigration into the mix. So they want borders to be completely wide open without all these pesky ports and customs checks. But they also don't want anyone to cross those borders either. I mean, perhaps putting a sign there saying, please do not enter, we'll do it. So yes, not really sure what you do with that level of thinking. But anyway, never mind. It's not true at all to say that we intend not to check things coming into the UK. Though that is what Boris Johnson has encouraged his supporters to think. Because we have to carry out those checks. World Trade Organization rules, don't you know? Actually, on a little aside there, someone did have to point out. So, you know, the, the role of the head of World Trade Organization is coming up and we've, we've put forward a candidate. Boris Johnson wants to put Liam Fox as a candidate. Now, he was the former International Trade Secretary who exposed his ignorance about the WTO on numerous occasions and has basically done so again, you know. He, he said how happy he was to be put forward for, for this nomination and, and got the name wrong. Failed to know that it's World Trade Organization. Never mind, doesn't matter. Surely he couldn't be actually appointed. But anyway, WTO rules say that we need to carry out these checks because we won't have an agreement with the EU. Well, either that or carry out no checks on anyone, but even that's going to fall foul of a few rules. Now, I've been reporting recently on the fact that although the government talked about no changes to trading circumstances, they have now started to change their tune. You know, recruiting more bureaucrats, sorry, than the entire EU Commission employees um, for all the extra paperwork that Brexit will mean and putting in planning requests for expansions to ports to carry out the massive number of extra checks that we are going to need to carry out in order to comply with our international obligations. Now, I'd explained the need for these over a very long time, and of course being dismissed by Brexit supporters, you know, the old Project Fear thing. Um, now it's happening, it is now happening, except it can't happen quickly enough. Now, I was saying at the start of the year, civil servants were explaining that at the start of this year, there isn't really time to get everything in place. And, and it's not even like work has been taking place in earnest. So we're now halfway through the year, more than halfway through the year. Certainly got no chance of getting them in place. We'd already heard from Michael Gove last month saying, oh yeah, we, we can't actually carry out checks. We can't have full border control at the end of this year. So yeah, admitting that we can't control our borders with Brexit. Nice one. Thank you. Excellent. And now we've got Liz Truss, International Trade Secretary, writing to her cabinet colleagues to say this massive hole in our capabilities is risking a number of things. It's risking smuggling into the UK. Um, it's risking legal challenges from the hallowed World Trade Organization. So she set out her main concerns, and these included four chief concerns. So one, 
the risk of legal challenge, as she described it, from the World Trade Organization. Two, the increased smuggling from the EU. Three, undermining UK international trade policy. And four, concerns about the union if EU tariffs are applied to all goods heading to Northern Ireland by default. Now, those last two are spectacularly interesting, not because they're surprising. I've talked about both of them and recently, but they are always dismissed. But I'll take the Northern Ireland issue first because it has two very important points of interest. So the first one is her, note her concern about the union. So there's this weird situation in the Conservative Party. On the one hand, Almost all of their support comes from the south of England. It is therefore much easier for them to win power if there were no union. You know, if Northern Ireland was to reunify the rest of Ireland and Scotland became independent, for example, it would be brilliant for the Tories, electorally speaking. However, there are a lot of Conservatives, potentially even the majority, that are not lying when they describe themselves as one nation Tories. We know Boris Johnson is, but a lot of them are not. They, they're genuine. They really do want to preserve the United Kingdom. Yes, I know how obvious it should be, how much damage that their actions are doing to the union. I didn't say they were clever, but that was interesting. But the other point of interest here was the applying tariffs to all goods heading to Northern Ireland. Now, I talked about this recently. So the plan is, obviously, some go any goods that are travelling from Great Britain to Northern Ireland and are going to stay in Northern Ireland obviously don't need any tariffs applying to them. But because those goods can move quite easily into the EU across the frictionless border inside Ireland, then you have to have a system for going, but if any of those goods could, if there's a risk that they'll end up in the EU, we have to apply those tariffs. So the government's plan is just to apply tariffs on everything and get everyone to fill in the paperwork and then you claim it back after the event. Uh, if you can demonstrate that, you know, or, or fulfill their criteria for demonstrating that it's low risk of ending up in the EU. And, and this is, again, one of those things that when I say this, you know, even though I've got this information from the government, Brexiteers try and deny this will happen or they massively downplay the extent to which it will happen when they can't deny it completely. Well, the thing is this. Liz Truss is a cabinet minister. What she has written in this leaked letter is not speculation. She is basing it on government plans for Brexit. She will know what the actual government plan is. She is part of that government. So the plan is to apply the EU tariffs to all goods, all goods heading, because that's what she said in her letter, heading to Northern Ireland and then have a process to claim it back later, as I talked about. And then there's her concern about undermining UK international trade policy. Now, this will be alluding to, again, what I and others have been saying for some time now. So the situation is as follows in terms of trade policy. You have one of the following situations because we are going to lose our, we have trade agreements with like most of the world. We're going to lose almost all of them. We've got like 20 and the biggest nation is Switzerland. No disrespect to Switzerland, but it's number 20 in the whole, in the, the wealthiest countries um, list. And also the next one down is way, way, way below Switzerland. So with all the major economies in the world, we have no trade agreement at the end of this year. That's all there is to it. We have no trade agreement, not just the EU, because we had agreements with other countries. Even if it wasn't a full deal, we had agreements as part of the EU. They're all gone. Now, the first thing you can do in a situation like this is you can apply tariffs on goods coming into the country from those countries, which is like virtually the whole world, according to World Trade Organization rules, you know, um, but what that means, of course, is you then raise the cost for British businesses. So British, we're not talking about us buying things from overseas for our home. Uh, we're talking about businesses who need to import raw materials, other products. That means their costs go up. <laughs> and on top of a weakened pound, obviously, it means they'll have to pay more for them as well. So you've got them costing more just as a default situation. Sorry about that. As a default situation and the weakened pound means, you know, it costs more as well. 
that could drive those businesses under. And if any of those companies get things in to then manufacture something and then export it, well, then you've got tariffs in the other direction as well. Um, although the weakened pound then maybe cancels out to a certain extent, at least you get some benefit there. But but still, you know, the, the tariffs in both both directions could also be ruinous for a lot of companies. So let's say you don't do that. Let's say you go, no, we can't do that. And that's what the government have done, by the way. Theresa May was talking about it. Boris Johnson was quite definitive about this. Oh, no, 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 this is what we're going to do. So then there's your alternative, which is the one Boris Johnson has talked about. And that is you reduce tariffs on almost everything. Not completely everything, but almost everything unilaterally. Not just EU goods. Not allowed to do that. WTO again. So you've got to do it. If you're going to do it on a particular good, your commodity, you have to do it for every country. And this is, as I say, what the government say they intend to do. Then the problem is you don't really have much of a bargaining position in trade negotiations because trade agreements are all about breaking down trade barriers. But we will have surrendered them before we even start talking. And it goes like this. Um, you go to a country, we would like a free trade agreement. And they say, oh, OK, what are you going to offer in return? Well, tell you what, you don't charge us tariffs for, for your import duties for our goods and we won't charge import ta uh, duties on, on the goods that, you know, we import from you. To which they will say, well, you already don't. We have that already. So we don't need an agreement with you because we will have already given them everything they want in order to preserve our, some of our businesses. You are caught between a rock and a hard place. And that is what Liz Truss is concerned about here because it's her job to get the, or to be involved in these trade agreements. You know, that's basically her job, developing these trade agreements. And, and what I want to know is why this useless article is only now concerned about Brexit when all of this has been evident for so long that I was able to talk about it over a year ago. But her letter is clearly trying to cover her ass because, as I say, it is her job to get these agreements if it becomes important. And it will also be her job to be involved if we face legal action. So she's reported as saying, there's a quote from the letter, I would like assurances that we are able to deliver full control at these ports by July 2021 and that plans are in place from January to mitigate the risk of goods being circumvented from ports implementing full controls. Now, the reference to July saying, I want assurances that we're going to have full controls from July, because you think, well, hang on, Brexit's happening in January. Yes, because when Michael Gove says, yeah, we can't, can't actually get full border control in place by January, he did suggest it'll take an extra six months. Now, we know that that is not the case. She knows that that is not the case. But like I said, she's just covering her ass there. But that's the reference to July in there. Um, it's like, OK, so give me assurance you're definitely going to have full controls in place by J July next year and that you've got some plan to mitigate the damage in the six months leading up to that from January. That's what she's saying, because what she's basically saying is this is a problem. It's not my problem. It's one of yours problems. Someone tell me how you're going to deal with it. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. But there it is. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.